Hi, I'm Doug and I'm your tech support representative from Atlantic British and in this video we're going to show you how to recover the seats on your Defender 90 uh, with the seat covers that we have in stock you can recover both front seats including the headrests so we're going to kind of give you a step by step and it's really not that bad a job a uh, little time involved what we have is the driver's seat already removed from a Defender it's essentially an easy job it's four bolts two in the front two in the back they, uh, they bolt into nut certs which are locked into the body of the vehicle so you can essentially just take it out with a ratchet and a socket you take your two out of your front you slide the seat forward bring the back in the full forward position the two bolts in the back are very easy to access pick the whole seat up pull it out you already know that the bottom of the seat is just a matter of a pop out situation so we put that to the side and we're going to get to that seat later on but now what I'm going to do is show you how easily you can take this initial seat cover off on these and on the back at the very bottom of the seat and towards the back you have basically a plastic lock one strip into another that holds the two pieces together you grab one corner and they do lock together pretty tight but you can peel the top one out and then simply work it down so that it comes right out pull the material from the front of the seat there's three tabs, one on each side and in the middle, that hook into the plastic lip here. So you'll lift them straight off, bring the material around, seat back in the upright position, and essentially fold it inside out. So that it really just peels off like a banana peel. Now some vehicles will have a uh, plastic which is a hand pull on the back of the seat which is held in with just two Phillips screws so you just simply take those out and the headrest inserts down into the seat and it is accessible from underneath and I found the easiest way to get the headrest out especially if it's a little bit on the older side or if you're doing a uh, you're doing a seat that's been together for a long period of time this is the bottom of the headrest slide. What we can do on that to dislodge it, use a rubber mallet because you don't want to do any damage to the bottom of the slide and just simply tap up and then once you get it started it'll lift right up and out. From there you can take your cover out when you flip it forward and you'll see through the seat there's a strip of material with three clips on it which attach to this webbing on the bottom just simply unclip you'll see here this is what they look like and on the replacement you're going to have a strip of material similar to this but you're going to use wire ties instead of these clips to reassemble it so that makes it fairly easy so we're pretty much we have this off we can discard the old cover what's nice about our kits is you not only get the covers but you also get new foam which makes a big difference on how it's going to appear when it's done with the new foam everything stretches out nice and the seat covers look very very nice the foam itself again peels right off some some of these you will have glued along the top and the back strip simply just pull it off and you can either sand or use a sure form type of file and you can clean the uh, material off of that so we're going to discard the foam as well so we essentially have the frame apart and at this point if you have any rust buildup or any corrosion buildup on the frame now would be a good time to sand it and paint it and that would also improve the appearance of your seats so we're going to move this out of the way on the bottom of the headrest you have a metal plate simply held in with two Phillips screws now they actually use a block of wood inside that these screws run into and we're going to show you that in just a second okay so we removed the plate and again if there's any rust or corrosion on the plate now would be a good time to do a sand and paint again will definitely improve the appearance of your seats now the bottom of this is just simply stapled the material is folded and stapled and as I mentioned earlier to a block of wood inside the seat if you have 
an old seat or if the wood has been water damaged or it doesn't look like it's going to hold its integrity, you can actually replace it. Let's take the rest of this off. And again, just like we did with the seat cover, you start from the bottom, fold it over, and then just simply peel it right off. And you can see what happens over time as these get older. You get rust built up in there and corrosion and whatnot, and after a while, then that will actually weep through and you can see it through the material. So we're going to discard this as well. Now, if you look at the bottom of the seat, or the headrest, you have two metal tabs right here, and these can be bent out, and this wooden block right here, peel, taken back out of the, the um, headrest. Measure it out, cut yourself a new piece, slide it back in, bend the tabs over, and you got a fresh piece of wood. If the wood that you have in there is still fairly solid, you should be able to reuse it easily when you put the new, new head uh, cover on. Okay, so now we've gotten, we've taken out of our kit our headrest cover. Now you'll notice that the piping does not run up the center, but comes around and will actually be on the forward or the front side of the headrest. you see I've already folded it up, it's about halfway up. And you're essentially going to install it the same way you took it off. With the bottom of it folded up like so, it makes the first half of it relatively easy. Now this material has got some stretch to it, which will give you some room. Now this is the point where you want to watch, you want to make sure that your piping is lined up square with the headrest itself, with the foam block. You're going to use a little elbow grease and pull it down so that it's a good tight fit. Don't worry about sp spending a little extra time on it because what you do now is going to directly affect how it looks when you're done. So you want to make sure you've gotten out the folds and you should feel no voids. Right here you can actually, I can pinch a little material so I know that I don't have any foam up inside there. So again, a little readjusting. Pull it down, front to back. Good. Now from that point, once you've got that, then it's just pull down the material until you're fully covered. Give it a little stretch. Make sure you fill all the voids. And piping running across the front, square to the headrest. You don't want to put this together so that the piping runs up at an angle or doesn't sit straight. And you'll be able to do a little bit of maneuvering even after you get it on completely. You can squeeze and push a little bit and everything will square itself up. Now on the bottom we have our metal bracing with our wood block. As I said, you can see the stretch in the material, so it does stretch out pretty nice. And then we're just going to fold up, tuck our corners, tuck our front, use a heavy duty staple gun. This, I've, uh, this has been Old Faithful for a long time. This is a Stanley, but Bow Stitch or any other manufacturer will work, but you want, don't use your desk stapler to put this together. Use a good heavy duty staple so it locks everything through because it's going to need to go through two layers of vinyl and into the corners you got to go through three layers so you want a good secure uh, attachment and then once you're done you put your bracket back on and you're good to go okay so now we've stretched the material over the headrest we've pulled it down filled all the voids made sure the piping looks nice and square and on the bottom you're going to tuck your corners in underneath the metal bracket the screws are going to go right down into that wooden frame lock everything in place and there's the first step towards your new seats on your Defender. Now next we'll get into the seat back and uh, continue from there.
Okay, so now we have our seat frame assembled and we're going to get ready to put the upholstery back on. Now, next step is going to be what I would suggest is we'll do the seat back first. Now, when we took the old foam off, you can see where it's stuck and they had some adhesive on areas of the back of the frame. We want to try to clean that off as well as we can. You can either take a wire brush, which will just pretty much rip it right out of there. Or you can take a piece of coarse sandpaper. I just happen to have some crocus cloth. And you don't have to worry about getting too fussy about it. You just want a halfway decent surface so that when you apply the new adhesive, it's going to grab the metal and not the old foam. So this will take a few minutes. We'll scrape this down. And then we're going to go on and glue the foam backing on. Okay, so as I said, we've got it pretty much cleaned off. Didn't have to get too crazy about it, but you just want to make sure you got a reasonably clean surface to put the, uh, the glue on. Now, save yourself a lot of mess. If you try to spray the frame, you're going to end up with a lot of overspray in the back and probably on whatever you have sitting behind there. Now, this is our new piece of foam that comes with our seat kit. You can see it's nicely cut, and it's an actually a very good fit on the original frame. And this is where we're going to apply the, the glue to. Now you're going to put some on the piece that flips over to the back. And then we're just using a general spray adhesive that it is recommended for foam. Make sure that when you buy the adhesive that it does say that it is safe for foam. There are some that you'll spray on and the foam will literally disintegrate. So definitely check the label before you pick your adhesive. We're going to go around the, basically just around the inside, down in the wells pretty much where you can see where the original adhesive was installed on the frame and you want to get a fairly decent bead in there and then a little one right across the bottom and we're gonna give that a little minute or so just to get tacky Slide this directly over so everything lines up. A little bit of pressure to push in place. Now again, you don't have to worry about this being glued solid on here. Gluing it down will help hold this in place when you go to put the outer cover on. And once the cover's in place, this isn't going anywhere anyway. And Probably the. Let's see if that'll hold. That'll, that'll hold. And just make sure that your hull for your headrest is aligned in the foam, that there's no blockage with the hull, and that'll make it easier when you get to the point to reinstall the headrest. Give a little squeeze. This adhesive works pretty good once you give it a chance to tack up a little bit. You can see it's already holding in place. And we're going to leave this alone for uh, probably about an hour or so. Let the glue get good and tacky and let things set up and then we'll install the cover. Okay, so now our glue is set and our foam is on the back and this will basically hold it in place. And as again, it doesn't have to be hard and secure. Once we put the cover on there, that's gonna lock the foam in pretty well. Now, we've taken the, the cover and we basically turned it inside of itself about three quarters of the way up. And you'll notice on the replacement, you have a piping that runs all the way around the front of the seat. Now, key to getting a good looking seat when you're done is to have the piping line up with this outer edge of the seat. When you do and everything is square, that seat will look very nice. Now, reason we two reasons we fold it up. One, it makes it much easier to lay over the existing foam. Two, if you remember when we took this apart, there was a flap of fabric in there that had several three small hooks. Now, here's the replacement fabric. You'll notice no hooks. What we'll use is three long wire ties that come with the kit. So, simply recheck. There's the front of your seat. We're just going to start by laying it over the top. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the fabric of this seat, or this kit, is pretty pliable. And you're going to be doing some stretching and pulling and, and retucking. But the idea is that once you get this over nice and tight, 
And you can get your hand up in there if you need to push some of the foam over or relocate the seat so that the piping does line up. And you want to make sure that the top is also down nice and tight. And this takes a little bit of tugging and yanking. And you can just do little bits at a time. It doesn't really need to have a lot of force, just enough to get it down and seated in place. And as you work your way down, you can tuck and rearrange. It takes a little patience, but it, the end results are worth it. Now, I basically have this top section on pretty reasonable and pretty well lined up. So we want to find that flap. And you'll see lines up right where it's supposed to, right through this. So we're going to take, if you come around to the back, your three existing holes on the webbing in the back and if you remember that's where the three clips went all right so we're going to take the wire tie we're going to insert from the front to the back so you end up with the catch part of the wire tie on the back of the seat so that you don't feel it through the seat cover you're going to run through that slit in the foam through the center hole in that webbing in the back And through the and through the flap. Okay, so we're through. We're going to insert the tab into the end of the catch. Tug, pull that down and again you'll find that you'll need to keep pulling this down to seat it keep checking your piping if you see it like this start to roll off the edge you can get your hand up in there and tuck the foam in and move it around so that everything lines up again So we got the first one in, and we're just going to do the same with the other two. Okay, so now we have our three wire ties in. We've pulled that fabric strap all the way into the back so that they're making contact. We're going to come around the back, take a pair of wire tie or uh, clippers, even a pair of scissors. We'll cut through these and just trim off the excess, leave a little bit of the tie ahead of the tab. And then we're just going to work the fabric down. Actually, by folding it up inside of itself makes this part of it much easier. And as you're working your way down, as I said, you can pull and stretch. You want to tuck that high end of the foam so that it lines up with the piping. You want it at least equal to how it looks on the other side. Tuck it on the bottom here a little bit. Tucking down a little bit, get it to stretch out. I said this fabric actually is very pliable. And again, you'll see once you get the cover on, it basically is going to hold the foam in place. So you really don't, don't have to go crazy with the glue. Now we're going to flip it over. Okay, so now we're at the point where we want to attach the two front and back of the, uh, the seat that will lock it in place. You'll see a ribbed plastic attachment here and another on here. You have single rib that gets tucked and pushed into this center rib right here. 
Now to do so, and if you have someone that can help you, it makes this a lot easier because it could become a two-man operation, but essentially what you need to do is stretch the seat front to the point where you can lift it. And as I said, you can see how pliable this is by pulling this up. The bottom lip of this plastic will tuck into these three tabs on the back. Once you've done that, you can pull the top or the rear down, line up the two ribs, and press them together. Okay, so what we've done is we've been able to stretch the front of the seat around and around the bottom, but this pulled the back down and then got the inner lock to hold it in place. Now you'll see these extra flaps here, and this is just designed to hide the foam. You can just tuck them in. It doesn't really matter as long as they seat up in place. With the seat in place, you're generally not going to really see a lot of this area anyway. But it's good to get it tucked in and out of the way of the seat mechanism on the one side. Even on the very bottom here, you can see the foam line. This will eventually stretch out over it, but you can get your thumb in there and you can tuck that in. It gives it a better appearance. Uh, I will tell you this is definitely easier with two people as opposed to one. There's a lot of stretching involved, but in the long run, it is well worth it. On that so we can get your seat back up. So you can see the piping is fairly even all the way around the seat. The cloth center is pretty much in center, and then this is where your flap that you put on earlier will pull this in to give it a better appearance and that's pretty much it there's your seat back and next we'll be dead doing the, uh, in the removal and installation of the seat base okay so at this point now with the seat in place we can take the headrest that we re uh, covered earlier you've got everything lined up up top find your slot and that's in place. So now we can actually at this point install this in the vehicle because the seat back will pop in afterwards. Okay so now we're at the point where we're going to do the bottom, the seat bottom and at this point we'll show you how to remove the existing cover and it'll also give you an idea how the new one's going to go on. Now what we're going to do is start off there are two small tabs on the back that the upholstery actually loops into. We're going to bend those almost to a straight up position like so then you'll see you got on the back side there are three plastic pins and all we need to do on those is simply pop them out of there you can get in under the upholstery with a pair of diags or a pair of needle nose and I think these are kind of tight so we're gonna go with the needle nose If the upholstery rips through, no big deal because you're replacing it anyway. And then once actually it rips through, you can grab the pin a little easier. All right. and third one is in the back here, like so. I guess sometimes it's easier just to rip it. Okay, and then once you get the pins off, you can unhook. You can see this metal rod through here. Now the metal rod, you may, probably may have to save to use in the new seat cover because I don't believe it comes with the rod in it, which is easy enough. You can grab, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it out of there. Fold that down. Then we're going to take the three pins out of the other side. Yeah, you find as this upholstery gets older, it does get a little brittle, kind of loses its stretch. So in most cases, we've actually ripped the cover to pull it off the pins, just to give you an idea. And then you'll get new pins with the kit. 
So installation, you don't have to worry about saving the old ones or if you break them. And as I said, once the upholstery is down, pretty much pulls the pin out. You can just grab it with a pair of diags and slip them out. And then to take the rest of the seat cover off, there's a rubber strip that locks into the actual base of the seat. And you'll see that right here. And what that does is like a pinch weld. It pops in place and locks in the seat. And we'll show you how to assemble that. But if you go to the very end, you'll see the open slot. You're going to start there. You want to try to get in underneath that. And we may actually have to take a small screwdriver and pry that out. Now, as these seats get older too, we get a little bit of rust in there. And that helps lock in the rubber as well. Once you get the seat off, you'll want to clean all that rust out of there anyway. Get a good wire brush or whatever. In this case, we're going to end up taking down the the rust we're going to grind it paint it so that we end up with a nice new looking seat now there we go these are pretty tight in here but once you get that little edge out you should be able to grab with a pair of pliers all right, so once we get the end out, and you can see how these deteriorate, and you also get a new rubber strip with the kit, so you don't have to worry about damaging that as well. Just simply pull it out all the way around. There we go. And the seat upholstery just tucks into that same slot that you just pulled the rib out from, run your fingers around, pull the seat out, now at the factory they glue the, the foam to the base, so you can peel the cover off, and you'll see in the back when we go to take this out, the two pins that lock us into the seat base go through the upholstery and the replacement's going to do the same thing. Alright, and then what we're simply going to have to do is be able to peel this up. You're going to end up with chunks of foam left on the base which you can just take off with a sure form or a scraper. And when you go to reassemble this you are going to re-glue the new foam base which you also get with the kit. So again, you don't have to worry about destroying that as well. And this really isn't a dense foam. So you can get your hand in there to rip and tear. Okay. So, there's our base. We no longer need that either. Here's your platform. And as I said, we'll just get in there. We're going to scrape this out. And because of the flaky rust and whatnot, we will grind and paint this one as well. Or you could get a replacement seat base, which would make things a little quicker. And that's it for disassembly. And next step, we'll show you how to put it back together. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken ground down and painted our bottom pan just for appearance sake and also ground down as far as the inside got all the old foam off and and we left some of the scaling because you're really not going to see that once the seats in place plus the spraying the glue over the top of it will actually act as a little bit of a protectant and that's what we're going to do next is we're going to glue the cushion to the bottom panel as they did in the original and this way it'll hold it in place as you're trying to put your seat cover back on which we're going to do afterwards so just a matter of Pull out your adhesive, give it a good shake, make sure you get good coverage. I usually like to do both the pan and the foam.
Don't be afraid to lay it on a little thick because it's going to be absorbed by the material. And I like to add a little bit of water back there as well. Let that get tacky for a second. Now when you install it, you have a step in the back of the seat here that you want to get in and pushed tight up against the frame. And it's just a matter of work your way around, apply a little pressure, kind of uh, wrap your fingers around and make sure that it's in fairly centered. Because essentially once you get this glued in place, you're not going to move it. So not too much overhang on the sides. Should keep it about equal and that back step right up against the back of the frame. Just apply a little pressure all the way around. Now we're going to let this set for a couple hours. You've got to let this set up really good and tight. You want to make sure that this seat is not going to move around on the frame when you're trying to put on your cover. So uh, that'll be the next step. Okay, so we're going to go into putting the cover on the seat base and finally finish up our, our seat. What we're going to do is we're going to take it and essentially turn it inside out. Flip it over and match up our seam lines with the grooves that are in the foam. Getting the back of the seat and the lines lined up so that everything falls into place. And you can put your fingers down in the line so you'll feel it drop down in there. Hand up front, simply peel down the sides. Now, just like everything else involved with putting seat covers on, there's going to be pulling and stretching. Let's get the initial setup on here. Tuck it in and get it good and tight. And you can see we're gluing the seat base or the foam in place is going to be a great help at this point. Otherwise it would be falling out of there as you're trying to get this stretched. Now you'll see you have two holes pre-punched in the bottom of the seat here and those are going to go over these pins that you use to install the seat back into the vehicle. And again, get a good finger hold and a good stretch. And you're going to tuck your foam up in. You want to make sure that that seat cover comes completely around the foam. And again, the high point of your foam should line up with the piping on the upholstery. And it's going to take a bit of stretching to get that over that pin. You've got one. You can use the seat base as a as a brace. You can see that this material is pretty pliable. Again, tucking the corners up and in so it sits up lined up with the piping. Now if you remember when we took this apart, we have three holes in the frame. One here, one here, and one here. And those are for your replacement pins that are going to lock the back of the uh, seat cover in place. Again, tuck and stretch, tuck and stretch. Now there's a couple different ways you can approach this. You might want to do the back first, you might want to do the front first. Actually, I prefer to do the front section first. And what we're going to do is this rib that the rope runs through, we're going to end up tucking that into this slot right here. And it's got to be tucked all the way in because what we're going to do then is have to install a rubber retainer, if you remember what we pulled off, and that essentially has a tooth 
if you see the cross section this bottom tooth is going to be inserted in there that when your upholstery is in place and you set the tooth over you're going to tap this in with a rubber mallet because it locks in pretty solid and that's going to hold and lock in the front of the seat all right so what you're going to do at this point is as i explained this rib sits down in that groove we're taking the seat and we've gotten the front fairly tight we have it pretty well centered around the frame i've already started it you can see where the rib of the middle of the strip locks right into that groove essentially pinching this rib underneath so the seat's not going anywhere so from this point you're going to work your way around the seat I like a little plastic upholstery tool to tuck that rib down inside and you can only do really about a section of about an inch at a time it's a slow progression but the results will look good when you're done and you can tell you'll see when the rib seats in and you may also end up with a little bit of peel out from under that rib but that's fine it's not going anywhere that'll still lock in place and that's essentially what you're going to do you're going to work your way all the way around the seat little bits at a time squeeze the seat down to give you some slack tuck the rib inside that groove with your plastic tool lay down about an inch or an inch and a half of your retainer rib it a good shot. Once you get started and get rolling, it'll get easier and easier as you go away, as you work your way around. But don't get impatient, just little bits at a time, and it'll work just fine. Okay, so now we've got the front rib in place. You can see it all pinched down. Before we go to the next step, you're going to basically you want to take a quick look. Does it look fairly centered? Do the ribs look like they're running down the area they're supposed to? Does it look like it's cocked to one side or the other? Once you're satisfied with that, then we can move on to the next spot. Now, as we explained earlier, we have three holes in the back for those three rivets that we pulled off. And your pull cord. And we're just going to essentially run this, stretch this down a little bit. And you're going to pull down and toward the back a little bit so that you don't bunch up any part of the seat here. We need to poke a hole through this. So once we get an idea of about where we're going to be located, and you can see the hole, you're going to take a small punch or a probe and run that down through just to get an initial hole in there. And you simply remove that. Take one of the pins down through the hole. You'll feel it start in that hole in the frame. Now you can do it with the rubber mallet, but the head of the mallet is kind of wide and your fingers are going to be well, reasonably close to where you're hitting. So, you can switch over to a soft mallet, even a small ball peen will work. And sometimes it takes a couple hits. We know we're down in the hole, we're in the slot there. And we seat that rivet. Then we go to the next one, we locate the hole. Try to pull this down so that the rib runs right along that lower edge of the frame. And again, not only down but to the back a little bit you can lift find the location of your hole poke through that gives you a starter hole for the pin simply remove you want to pull down just a little bit again push your pin through the vinyl I think we missed it that time Didn't open up a big enough hole. Sort of like threading the needle. Gives you an idea how resilient this material is. Sometimes you need to poke through at least two or three times before you get a big enough hole. Here we go. Now we're through. We get it started down in the frame. Pull back and down. Tap your rivet in place. 
Now, as you get back to the rear, you're going to see what we're going to do eventually is we're going to end up pulling this cord on both ends and it's going to tighten everything up a little bit. But in the meantime, we're going to pull this back off, tuck our foam in. You can actually use the cord at this point to stretch this down and to the rear. And again, we're going to lift the locate so you get a good idea where the hole is. Poke through. Run it through a little bit. Poke the pin through. Stretch down, stretch back. You'll feel the pin slot drop into the hole. And seat the pin. Hey, right. so we got those three in. We're going to do the same to the other side. Okay, so now we've got our rivets on all three on both sides. Everything is locked down. Now you just take the point where you have the string, give them a good stretch, and we'll pull everything in tight. You're going to be on the bottom side of those two rear retainer pins. You can loop. What you're going to basically do is do a double knot on one side and create a loop in one so that you can then pull on the other. Wrap around twice and then essentially just tie it to the other string. And you're not going to see this and you'll find out why in just a second. We can just take this, tuck this in the back. Or if you want, you can actually take a pair of nippers and trim off the excess, which we're going to do anyway because we're going to show you what we'll do that with the rib as well. And then on the rib, we do end up with some excess. So we're just going to trim that off as well. It'll take a few cuts. This is actually a pretty tough piece of rubber. And then this way, it's trimmed out nice. Now, uh, all right, in the back of the original seat where we removed that back flap. You will find a small metal rod that they insert through, and this is what those tabs grabbed onto. So at this point, we're going to run that metal rod. We've cleaned it up a little bit. Sometimes they do get a little rusty. So that you can see it through these cutaways that they do in the upholstery. And we're going to go, now we can, at this point, we can tuck back in. Straighten that out a little bit. We can tuck this down. And we're going to stretch it back over the pins. Flip this over. And then we're back to the pulling and tugging again. We're going to stretch this up and grab around that. And the same on this side. like the way that knot is sitting so we're going to tuck that down inside and then just the foam will take up that knot you won't see it all right and then while you hold that down in place we'll 
tap those tabs back down. So there you have it. You see this on. Your piping sits right on your high spot and across the back. Your back pins are exposed so you can pop the seat in. We've already done the seat back. We've done the headrest. That seat has been bolted in. So let's put this in the car. And there is your fully recovered seat. Looks good. And there we have it. Would make a nice weekend project to recover the seats on your Defender. Look how much better it'll be when you're done. Now, if you wish to order these seat covers, you can get them through any of our knowledgeable salesmen at 1-800-533-2210. They'll be happy to help you at any time.